We got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I am doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? You know what? I'm not going to complain. Hopefully the resource issues on my computer that were making me choppy last episode are fixed. I hope that wasn't too bad. I hope if it, if the Monday ep- or the, 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 yeah, it sounds okay now, but it sounded okay at first on the other one too. So we'll see how it goes as the episode goes. Um, but yeah, if, so, sorry about the Thursday episode. I know the audio was choppy. Um, so hopefully it's better this episode. Uh, Kyle, we're doing the slip picks this week. Do you want to hop right into it or do you want to do more witty banter before we do that? No, I think I think we'll we'll jump right into it here. We got about six games to cover here. Uh we we do pick seven games throughout the uh every week here, but you can listen to the seventh game, the Hosting Iowa game in our Thursday episode. But we will talk about the other six games right here, right now. So we will go ahead and start off with Michigan State heading out west to take on the Oregon Ducks. Uh this is a Friday night game, Friday night on Fox, and the Ducks are a 23 and a half point favorite in this game here. So pretty much about the same. Is that is that what it was with with the Ohio State game? I, I forget what the <laughs> I already forgot what the over under was at um, Ohio State and Michigan State. Yeah, it was 23 and a half. Oh, you mean the spread? So it, yeah, exactly the same. It is exactly the same here. It did start higher for Michigan or for Ohio State Michigan, did it not? Didn't ours lock in at like 25 or 26? It might have been. Yeah. Yeah. I think it eventually worked its way down to 23. That being yeah. said, uh, this is being played in Eugene. It is. So if we're trying to use Michigan state as a litmus test for where Ohio state stacks up against Oregon right now, three points plus like an another three points for the home field advantage for strictly using Michigan state as a, as a litmus test that puts Ohio state at like plus three over, over Oregon or plus six. Well, well, the question here is, but will then, Oregon cover? But then it's Oregon, so it takes you back. So it is, it's still three. Minus yeah. three against Oregon. 23 and a half, Jared. 23 <laughs> and a half. Who, who do you got? Um, I am going with, as I reveal the coins, Michigan State. Um, Oregon was kind of kind of disappointing on all but one game this year. So the question is, and the, but that one game where they weren't quite so disappointing was the most recent game, right? So how do we stack that up? Is, is the team congealing and getting better? Was that an, uh, an anomaly? How do we start to stack? You know, how, how, how do we weigh all of that? Um, ultimately I'm going to go with Michigan state. I think they got, I think they are congealing. Um, both of these teams have a lot of flux, Oregon with their skill, Michigan state with their coaching. But an important note to note here is that the Michigan state head coach is formerly the Oregon state head coach. So Michigan State, very familiar with Oregon going into this game. Oregon, not necessarily quite so much familiar with Michigan State. I think that's a noteworthy advantage. I think enough to get me to lean towards Michigan State, not to win, not to win, don't get crazy. The reciprocity familiarity is an interesting point. Reciprocal familiar. Quit being a lawyer in the chat, Esquire. God. Um. <laughs> but yeah, the I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Michigan State, not to win, but to cover. Uh, would it be yeah, non-recip? 
non-reciprocal familiarity. Yeah, this this is definitely going to be really inter- interesting here. I think I mean we saw Sparty come come a few times against Ohio State where we talked about this in our uh, Scarlet and Grade episode on Monday. That at halftime it could have been like a one score game, ten, uh, ten point game at halftime, but um, uh, but sometimes the ball rolls that way too. So I could really see this being really close in the beginning. Uh, and then I think talent just going to take over here. Oregon, I think Oregon's finally going to get their finally have their have their groove here, and I think they'll put Sparty win here away here. So I got. I got the Ducks to to cover and win. I think 23 and a half is a really good number. I think if you said this like at 25, I may pick Michigan State, but I, th- I think it's going to be really close that Oregon's going to cover. Okay, what does Esquire have to say? Yeah, Esquire, our guest picker this week, says uh, Oregon, uh, he has Oregon to cover. Uh, Sparty is in the middle of a gauntlet that is just not equipped to handle yet. Yeah, and that's the other thing is that they're playing. They're um, just played Ohio State, and excuse me, just played Ohio State, and they have a day less and have to travel to the west side as well. I think that's going to take a lot on their toll too. I think that's a good point there. Uh, they had a scrappy one against Boston College, got bulldozed by us, and now starting down the duck shaped barrel on another top 10 opponent. I think the dam breaks and the ducks fly together. I'm not, I'm not too concerned about jet lag or whatnot, or it being a Friday or whatnot, simply because it, it is at nine o'clock, which is just if you're Michigan, that's six o'clock. Like that's not a weird time to play football. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too worried about, it's it's when West teams come East that I think are, is the bigger issue. Um, when an East team goes West, it's it feels like less of an issue, um, unless of course they're kicking off at like ten thirty. But I don't think any of the East Coast teams would agree to that. In the same way that I don't think you're going to see too many West Coast teams, you know, Big Ten West Coast teams come East and then play a nooner. I think yeah, those games are going to be played like three thirty or later. Yep, fair enough. All right, next game we have here is noon on uh, on Saturday. SMU taking on at Louisville. Did not know about this, but they this is the first time that Louisville and SMU have played each other since nineteen eighty. Over forty, I'm... over forty, over forty years later, they they get to play again here. Uh, but Louisville in this game is a six and a half point favorite. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, honestly, if you had told me Louisville and SMU had never played at all before, I probably would have believed you. Um, I'm going to go with SMU. Um, like I'm going to be real on this. This is a straight up, I, I don't know. I'm going to pick the underdog pick like straight up that this is me saying I don't have a good read on either of these teams. I don't have a good read on Louisville. My, my best data point for Louisville right now is that they lost to Notre Dame, but quite frankly, I have as many questions as I do answers in regards to Notre Dame too. So, and I got nothing. I got no reads on SMU. I straight up just don't know. When in doubt, pick the underdog. I'm picking the underdog. Yeah, I mean, uh, for SMU, uh, Kevin Jennings has been just really has done really well for SMU uh, so far this year. He's scoring a lot of points. Uh, I mean, they got they got big wins over TCU and Florida State this season. I know, I know we can joke around like, ha, ah, Florida State's only won one game, but I mean it's it's a big it's a big win for SMU there. And Jennings has had um has done really well so far. I think it's he's only thrown one pick so far this year, but he's yeah, he's he is the the lifeblood of the of this offense here. But I think I think Louisville has the defense that can 
slow them slow Jennings down a little bit here. Um, I I think this was the the game I was torn the most about who who to pick here. I think Louisville will win here, but I keep going back and forth. I, I, I'm just going to stick with my gut here. I'm I'm going to go with Louisville to cover here, but man, yeah, I, I don't have a. I don't have a good feeling about that pick though, but my gut I, I think with Kyle and I, for a six and a half. First off, don't real life gamble, which is one of the rules. Where did our lore master go? Um, it's from, it's one of the rules. Uh, don't real life gamble, but the, uh, I think what Kyle and I are trying to say here is that if you got, if you got money to spend, if you got a little bit of money to throw away on a game this week, not does not this one pick a different game i think is the takeaway not this one uh before we get to esquire's pick you mentioned florida state florida state and clemson are playing each other this weekend and i didn't deem it necessary to include it in the sloop picks did anyone see that coming at the beginning of the season that it wouldn't have been one of the top six games of the week. How crazy is that? That's yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let, let me go back. Our guest picker, Esquire, uh, says, I have an obscure affection for SMU based mm. on playing NCAA co- in, co- NCAA in college. Uh, roll stangs with the points. I don't, I don't like SMU personally. They're the second most cheating ass university in existence. And I don't forgive them for it. Most cheating ass is Michigan. In case anyone was wondering. All right. The third, third game here also at noon, uh, Missouri and Texas A&M. Uh, I had to double look and like, yeah, Texas A&M is ranked here, but, uh, and even, even more surprisingly, Texas A&M is favorite over ninth ranked Missouri by one and a half points, one and a half point favorites over Missouri. I, yeah, it's one of two, I would say surprising spreads of the weekend. We'll get to the other one later. Yeah, I, Again, I'm going with my gut here. I think defensively, Missouri has done really well, like really well so far this year. And I, I know Texas A&M is doing much better, much better than their when they lost to Notre Dame in Week One. But since then, they've done, they've done, well, they've gotten better. I, I, I shouldn't say they're doing much better. They, they've gotten better, but these last two, but the last couple of weeks, they've it's like uh, you barely beat Bowling Green, you barely beat Arkansas. So he's not a he's not a great team here. I'm I'm gonna stick with I'm gonna stick with Missouri to to cover here. Um I mean you can say the same with Missouri. They haven't done well against Boston College and Vanderbilt too, but I'm gonna go with my gut. I think I think Missouri Missouri will uh win. I agree. I have nothing to add other than what Kyle said. I like Missouri right. to win and the fact that they're, and of course we say they're an underdog. It's one point, whatever. But yeah, I, yeah, I, uh, I agree. Give me so Mizzou. Esquire. Esquire says, um, uh, this <laughs> before was, he well, says he that, says he also says, uh, Mizzou, Texas A&M was supposed to be my chaos theory pick. Um, stupid bastards had to go and rank them and steal my glory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Texas A&M stinks, but Missouri has underperformed at the at the seams like a like a spot where they get where they get aught in some sort of Texas oil field quicksand. Texas A&M wins and covers, plus the value is too good to pass up for chaos theory. But come to find out, this cannot be a chaos theory pick. So he has Texas. He has Texas A&M. All right. There you go. All right, before we get into the next one, we're going to take our first uh, ad break here. Uh, check out the sloopcast.com uh, website where you can find all of our lovely links to our Patreon page, patreon.sloopcast.com. 
and our Discord, discord.sloopcast.com. Uh, come check out, come check us out, hang out with us. Uh, we talk a lot about Ohio, obviously with Ohio State football, uh, the uh, college football as a whole, uh, and professional sports, college basketball, and off topics as well. It's a, it's a great community just to chat with uh, everybody else. So uh, come check us out. Again, that's discord.sloopcast.com. Uh, with that being said, we'll go ahead and take our first ad break and we'll be right back. Hey, look at me going back to the correct screen for once. Yeah. Next game, Kyle. <laughs> Next game. Again, S-A-S-A-S-A. S-A-S-A? Uh, matchup here. S-A-S-A. Ole Miss in South Carolina. Uh, Ole Miss in this game is an eight and a half point favorite over the Gamecocks playing at 3.30 on Saturday. What's, what's with I'll, Mississippi I'll, trying to brand themselves as the SIP now? I I must have missed that. I, I, watched, I watched a lot of the Ole Miss game last week, and I noticed before this, but it, it kind of really sunk in how terrible it was when I ended up watching the entire, most of the entire game last week. It's like in their end zones. They have a they have like the SEC logo on some of their stuff, except it says SIP in it instead of SEC. Their end zones this past weekend just said the SIP. It's been a weird recruiting branding thing under Kiffin. You, you, we'll throw it back. Try again. Listen, not not everything's a winner. I'm glad y'all tried something. You tried and it's failed, and that's okay. Sometimes you don't know if something's going to work until you put it in giant font in your end zones. I'm confused. I, I have no idea what, what that is. The SIP? Yeah, it's Mississippi. Mississippi. It, the SIP. I, listen, I'm not saying it's good. Sure. Don't ask me to defend it. Don't ask me to defend it. Anyway, sure. uh, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the actual football game. It, it, thank, you know what, Spikes? A double thank you. A double At thank you. you tried. Well, it's also the Simpsons thing, which if you watched last your yesterday's episode, when I was betrayed in the chat by non Simpsons fans. Um, anyway, <laughs> give me South Carolina. Uh, not necessarily to win. Not necessarily to win. I actually think Ole Miss wins it, but. This feels like an overtime or a final drive to take us to overtime sort of game. Like this will this will be in doubt until the very end. And maybe South Carolina wins it. I, I tend to think that they don't. But but this is like a hey everyone, tune to ESPN really quick. The end of this South Carolina or yeah, South Carolina old miss game might go crazy. That feels like that sort of game. That that that's my take. So, I get a full score because Mississippi has to win by nine to cover. I get a full score to take South Carolina. I'm going to take that. Yeah, I'm 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 taking the Rebels. I'm taking the Rebels to to cover in this one here. I'd probably still take them at like ten and a half. I probably still would take them there. Uh, South Carolina is very very one dimensional. Uh, they. They don't pass the ball all that well. Their their running backs are or their their quarterbacks are not that that accurate. Um, uh, their Sellers is fifty four percent completion, uh, and is only thrown for four hundred yards. And and their other quarterback has thrown for three hundred yards. So, five like six hundred yards, uh, or seven hundred yards between the two quarterbacks. Like that's. Yeah, Ole Miss, Ole Miss has too much talent. I, I think I think they I think they'll run away with this one here. So I'll I'll take the cover for for the Rebels. Okay. Uh what does Esquire have to say? Uh Esquire says this line is set at number that Ole Miss covers if they if they're decent and doesn't if they suck and just half played no one. I think they get a 10 point win here. So he has Ole Miss to cover. 
All right. Um, next up. All right. Next up is a, another SEC matchup. This time it's Tennessee and Arkansas. Now, before before anybody makes a comment, like why why the hell are we picking this game here? Um, at seven thirty. Well, the, the, the seven thirty. The, game, games. the games are pretty. The, the games are pretty, pretty uh, slim picking for for seven thirty. I'll be um, on. I'll be honest. I don't like this slate this weekend at all. I think this is kind of a weak weekend for college football. Compared to last weekend, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Which which means, Jared, which means there's going to be upsets this weekend. I mean, there's all, it's, it's, it's <laughs> always, always, it's always. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. All right. Um, Tennessee is a 13 and a half point favorite in this game. I, yeah, I, I got, I got Tennessee. I, I just, I think Tennessee's offense is just really good. Like really, really good. And if Nico continues to play, play really well, uh, that this, this team is, is going to, it's, they're really going to get uh, Alabama run for their money here and, and Georgia, Georgia too. So, um, yeah, I'll take, I'll take Tennessee to cover here. I, I, I really do not like, like Arkansas in this matchup. You know, I've had Tennessee. I kind of, I kind of, I've said this a few times this year. I've been kind of, I've always kind of, I have like Tennessee and Miami in like this same bucket and, you know, this, the same thought process of these teams that are always supposed to be really good, but never actually turn out to be anything more than slightly above average. Um, just like these overhyped, are they back? sort of teams. Um, you can put USC in that same bucket. Um, like, are they back? Are they back? Are they back? Is it like, we used to do the same thing with Texas, but Texas legitimately is back now. Right. Um, I'm starting to believe in Tennessee. I'm not there yet with Miami. I think USC has already proven that they aren't back yet. They're fine, but they're not, you know, they're, they're above average. I'm starting to believe in Tennessee. And as much as I don't like Arkansas, because I don't, I don't think Arkansas is very good. They do have a tendency to play teams closely. So I, I will say that I get why this spread is under two scores. Um, I get it, but man, I'm, I'm starting to believe in Tennessee. Which which means, of course, that I've just cursed them and they'll lose this weekend, Arkansas. That's that's exactly what that'll mean. Um, but I'm I'm starting to believe in Tennessee, and I'm a, I'm been a shut up and show me. I don't want to say I'm a Tennessee hater because I'm not. I don't really care about Tennessee, but I've been a shut up and show me guy when it comes to Tennessee. I'm in the same way with Miami right now. Shut up and show me. Um, I'm starting to believe in Tennessee and I'm, I'm going to, I've, I've bought a, I've got a reservation on the hype train. Mm-hmm. Uh, Esquire just down in the chat, not his pick yet says uh, Miami is poised for some kind of mid to late season, heartbreaking collapse. Tennessee, I think is going to be in the mix for the sec title. That's, that's hard. That's, I kind of right now. Okay, is this fair? Is Tennessee the Penn State of the Big Ten? Is that is that a? I mean, what I mean, what 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 have they done in recent history? <laughs> what has Penn State done in recent history? It, my point exactly. Okay, so you're agreeing with me. Yeah. Um, it's Tennessee, Georgia, Bama, Texas. That that's the thing, right? At least Penn State kind of. I you know I don't believe in. Uh, I mean, even Vegas, as we'll cover here in a moment, doesn't believe in Michigan. Um, but Bama is still Bama. Georgia is still Georgia. Texas is amazing. Like the the path for Tennessee is not nearly as clear as the path for for Penn State is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For the Big Ten, it's us, Oregon, and Penn State. Yeah, that's the that's that's the 
where the Oregon to Penn State analogy kind of falls Mm -hmm. is it would be accurate if Michigan were still really good, right? Then it it might be more of an apt uh, analogy in that situation. But for the, 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 the Penn State equals Tennessee analogy to fully work, either Michigan would have to be really good or maybe Georgia is a lot worse than we think they are. You know what I mean? But I don't think that's the case. So yep. anyway, what does Esquire have to say about Tennessee and Arkansas? He says, I think Tennessee is the real deal. Rocky top all the way. He agrees with me. And, He's... This, and this, is the, this is our first pick that we all three of us agreed. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, Kyle, you and I are more different than alike so far, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. That's only even just counting us two. That's our only second one that we agree with. Yeah. All right. And our last one here, Michigan, similar to like Michigan State, heading out west. They're heading out west, uh, but Michigan's going a little bit further north to to Washington to take on the Huskies. Uh, 730 game on NBC. The unranked Huskies are a two and a half point favorite over Michigan. Now there's a, there's a conversation that was going on here, Jared. And I just want to make sure we were all, we're all on the same page here. Yeah. Yeah. And related to chaos theory. Yeah. I know chaos. uh, Traditionally chaos theory is a unranked team. Uh huh. Beats a ranked team. Yep. So how does, how does, how does this fall when an unranked team is uh-huh. favored over a ranked team? I don't understand the question. I understand the spirit of the question. Don't get me wrong. But at no point did we ever say anything about Vegas numbers when in regards okay. to chaos theory. We simply said an unranked team beating a ranked team. That's all we ever said. Yeah. All right. All right. I I just want to throw that out there. Okay. Two and a half point favorite at, you know, I know, I know that, (laughs) uh, I, 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 I'll pick the Huskies. I'll pick the Huskies. Uh, they, I I really like, I really like Will Rogers. Will Rogers, Will Rogers has done a really good job. Uh, so far this year, uh, he's thrown for how many? He's thrown for over thirteen hundred yards already in five games here, uh, and he's and he's done really well. Ten touchdowns, zero interceptions. He's done he's done really good in protecting the ball, which is very important for Washington to to win this game here. Uh. But yeah, I, th- I think I think Washington gets it done at home, and gives Michigan their their second loss of the year. Okay, which is also my chaos theory pick, Jared. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Uh, we have me next. Uh, I'm going Michigan here. Do not get me wrong. I don't like I've. I've been on the Michigan's actually, actually, you guys, Michigan's going to be really terrible this year bandwagon since February. And Kyle and I have podcast proof. You can go back and listen to it. We did a know your enemy off season edition. It was February or March. Go listen to it. We we've been preaching to anyone who would listen that Michigan is going to be terrible this year for months. That being said, Washington is also proven not to be very good. This is true. I I would love to sit here and say, hey everyone, this is this is it. This is the beginning of the end for the because we all knew they were gonna lose to Texas, right? I made a hundred dollars on that game as a matter of fact. Uh but th- this is not that game. It, allegedly. Um in, in Minecraft. They made a hundred Minecraft dollars in on that game. Um <laughs> betting's legal in Ohio. I don't have to do that anymore uh but it's still funny so i'm gonna keep doing it um anyway the point is is that i'm i'm a even 
Michigan is an underdog against a Washington team that's also not very good feels too good to pass up on. Just crafting the coolest of minds, exactly. Um, what does Esquire have to say? Yeah, Esquire says here, Washington is bearing the brunt of cross-country travel and back-to-back weeks of bruising running games without much of a passing attack. I think Teton takes advantage of the path Greg Schiano blazed. Teton covers. Okay, well, at least I'm not alone on that. All right, we already did the Ohio State and Iowa game on the Thursday episode. We all, oops, we all chose Ohio State to win and cover. Now, uh, before we move on, uh, Esquire actually wrote out a long prediction for that game that we normally read on the Thursday episode, but I got a bit distracted by some uh, computer slowness issues that was messing up the podcast. So I forgot to read it. So I'm going to read that now. Um, or after, after this, uh, this next ad break here. Or after this ad break. You know, you said it, you have to do it now. Ah, all right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Um, the uh, check out all the lovely links in there mentioned about the discord. I'll m- mention about the merch dot the uh, If you want to help support Jared and I out, uh, head on over to merch dot the uh, A lot of great, a lot of great designs there. Or if you want to just want to straight up support us, be a um, Patreon, check out Patreon, Patreon dot the uh, to help support Jared and I. So we'll go ahead and take this quick ad break and be right back. Okay, I'm going to read this now. Um, this is Buckeye Esquire's prediction in regards to Ohio State and Iowa. Once again, we all chose Ohio State to win and cover. Um, I think the best, uh, man, I just screwed that up straight up from the beginning. Uh, I think the defense looks more uh, aggressive early because Iowa is so run centric. Tyleek will be back and I think the silver bullets show out. I think the Buckeye offense uh, will be content to methodically work down the field on the Iowa defense uh, early, and eventually the big plays will come. Iowa gets a field goal early and a garbage time touchdown in the fourth. Cornell Tate is my player to watch because he's uh, been doing so much of the dirty work recently that I think they'll scheme up some rewards for him. Also, the Iowa defense will likely focus their attention on Emeka and JJ might be able to do well enough that Carnell gets more organic looks too. Uh, Caleb Brown is probably the best skill player uh, they've faced thus far. And if the defense doesn't get uh, its run fits together, it could be a frustrating afternoon of extended drives for Iowa. Nine touchdowns on the year, averaging 8.4 per carry, um, six foot tall, 225 pounds uh, is a full day. I think this is a game for Ty Leak to shine and uh, need the best game of the year to date from the linebackers. I like right. was back in second grade and reading a paragraph in front of the entire class. Not going to lie. A for effort. Thanks. <laughs> On to the chaos theory scoreboard. Now, Kyle um, has no showmanship in his body whatsoever and already gave away his answer. Ah, uh, yes, I got I got the Wolverines pick here to to lose. Yeah. Which would be the, a which would be a sixteen points. Be sixteen points if if uh if the Huskies pull out the win. Now Kyle. I hate to be anticlimactic. Okay. But so did I. <laughs> but. But you picked but, Michigan. You picked Michigan to, to cover though. And. Okay. Maybe they All win. Right. Maybe they win by one point. Okay. 
Or maybe the chaos theory is meant to be more of a most likely chance of chaos as opposed to specifically predicting the outcome of the game. It's called a hedge. Thank you, Esquire. That's why you're my lawyer. Are you even barred in Ohio? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> All right. Um, guest picker Esquire picks Louisville to lose. Only a four point get, but also I would say a pretty likely get in my opinion. Uh, for Louisville to lose this upcoming game. I think SMU is, I, I don't know. What was the spread on that one again, Kyle? It's yeah, only six uh, points. Six and a half. Yeah. I think that's a pretty high value pick. I will neither confirm nor deny. You know what, Esquire? That's fair. Well, it was that really more fair. of a, it was really more of a, a rhetorical question. I wasn't looking for an actual answer. Um, all right, Kyle, I think, I think that's it. We kind of, we normally spend more time in chaos theory, but it kind of sucks the life out of it when we both choose the same game. So I guess that's it. Uh, the glory of Texas A&M over Mizzou was stolen from the Sloop Cats uh, by the Southern Biased. AP. Yeah, I have no idea why Texas A&M's ranked. That should be against the rules. What, us predicting the same game? I mean, then we would have to know each other's picks before the game, which makes the show less fun. Yes. Um, I don't know Jared's. Jared don't know, doesn't know mine, so... Yeah, I... Because Kyle's brought a couple to the table that I was legitimately surprised by. And it's that's a lot more fun because then we can talk about it in real time. Um, so it's just it's more fun to do it live, I guess, is the point. OK, Kyle, um, I have no hopes in passing you in the Chaos Theory scoreboard this week. However, um, I can at least get on the board and not lose ground to you. So that's something. Yeah, that, that that is something. That's something, I suppose. Because I'll be honest with you. When I was picking this game, I'm like, oh, this is too obvious. This is the obvious pick, right? That mm -hmm. was my concern. So I kind of didn't want to pick it at first because it was the obvious pick and because I kind of thought this would happen. But then it's like, okay, but it's, if it's the obvious pick and it's worth a lot of points, do you really want to put yourself further behind Kyle by not picking it? Yeah, okay, that's a good point. I said to myself, because I talk to myself a lot. It's healthy. I swear. I don't have any problems. Uh, so I'm like, yeah, screw it. I, I have to I have to pick Michigan here. And just to be clear, when I say pick Michigan, I mean to lose. All right. Third party arbiter. Uh, no. Unless unless one of you want to take over the graphics department for me. Because that's kind of the. I kind of, I try to, I try to fill this. I don't know Kyle's. You saw me typing Kyle's in real time, but you, you saw I had mine and Esquire's preloaded. I try to do as little typing on the show as possible. That's, that's also part of it. Anyway, yeah. that's, that's inside baseball stuff. No one cares about. Um, that's it, Kyle. I think that's, is that the end of the show? Yeah, I think that's the end of the show here. I think we can go ahead and, uh, we can go ahead and, uh, wrap it up right here. I think my audio was fine all episode, too. It was. So, it was. No issues. Awesome. I could tell, I because I, even I can tell, like, when my video starts getting a little choppy. Uh, anyway. Um, that, that's it. That's the end of the show. Do you have anything in Kyle's Corner? Uh, something that popped up that was really interesting. What, what was it, it's that meme of, um, um, it's a bold choice. Uh, let's see how that. See how that uh, bold choice uh, plays out. Yeah, yeah, from dodgeball. Uh, so Caleb Johnson came out and mentioned mentioned saying, "Yeah, Ohio State didn't re recruit me, uh, but I wouldn't even have gone even if they did offer me. I want to beat them. That's my goal." Okay, where where's he from? Uh, he is from 
uh, Ohio. Mm. He's a, he's a, he's a, he is, he's from Hamilton. Mm. Oh, he's Cincinnati. I mean, mm. I, I might believe him then. <laughs> a lot of those Cincinnati kids don't want to play for Ohio State, so I I you know what I believe him. Part of the twenty two class, he was the eighteenth best player from the state of Ohio. In in that twenty two class. What running backs did we get that year? Twenty two? Uh, Wasn't that a bad didn't we lose out on guys late? Like that was a bad year for Ohio State. Wasn't that the bad year uh, for Ohio well, State running backs? I, I don't know about I like we got remember, but no there, one? there was like no but there was no running backs. There. Yeah. So that was the one with Drew Aller was the number one. Yeah. No, uh, it was CJ the year Hick. after C- Dallin was- Hayden. CJ Hicks, Sony Styles, uh, Tegra, Gabe Powers. That's that's the twenty two we class. There. We were in on a bunch of running back. Like I think we had someone leave the class late. Like it was just a bad, a bunch of bad circumstance situations for the running backs that year. I forget the exact details of it, uh, but did we not recruit one? Yeah, no. There, I mean, well, I mean, one, we recruited one running back. One running back. Who did we end up getting? He's no longer on the team. That would be uh, a fan favorite here. Uh, Dalen Hay- oh, that Dallin was Hayden. that was Dallin Hayden's year. Okay. Mm-hmm. That was the only running back. So zero running backs in the 22 class. Didn't we have a class where we had literally no running backs? Anyway, don't, don't look that up. We're, 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 we're not going to keep going down that path. Um, right, but that's it. That's it, Jared. Few. Brain still works. <laughs> Wish I could say the same. Um, all right. Tonight's ending music, Cincinnati band called Saving Escape. Uh, they are fun. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. Um, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I don't like describing music. I think genres are a necessary evil, but an evil nonetheless, but whatever. We don't, don't get me started on music. I'll start talking stupid, not stupid, but long and boring. Anyway, that's today's episode. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Saving Escape.